There are a few main takeaways and one of our major takeaways was that the literature on this issue has grown substantially just within the past two years and along with that the ratio of studies that found a positive association between unconventional oil and gas development and a health impact, adverse health impact, has also increased. Um, so we looked through in total 142 studies and 127 of them, which is 89%, found in some way that unconventional oil and gas development is associated with a health impact. Um, and then we, we found that 70 of those studies, or roughly half, um, were, rel were related to Pennsylvania. So whether that's through sample populations, including Pennsylvanians, or um, using monitoring within the state of Pennsylvania or and any other way that the data was extracted from the state. Um, and then 28 of our studies were um, focused specifically on Pennsylvania and the Marcellus Shale here. And of those 28 studies, 78% um, of them found evidence of a health risk. A second major takeaway from the report was that early life exposure, and prenatal, including prenatal exposure, was the most studied topic. Uh, the research shows a link between unconventional oil and gas development and um, adverse birth, birth outcomes and morbidity in children. Um, Pennsylvania studies showed that unconventional oil and gas development is associated with low weight birth rate and preterm birth, and there is an epidemiologic link between uh, drilling and um, early infant death. And another takeaway from the report was that health impact and exposure assessments um, focus primarily on air pollution, so local and regional air pollution, exposure to local and regional air pollution was um, the most widely acknowledged and also geographically widespread risk driver. There are several pollutants of concern, so uh, for example, volatile organic compounds, VOCs, and hazardous air pollutants, such as benzene, um, were repeatedly uh, shown to cause adverse health impacts in the literature. These can be released at different stages of the drilling process, from venting and flaring to fugitive emissions and evaporation from flowback pits. Um, Acute and chronic non-cancer risk and acute cancer risk was found to be associated with occupational inhalation of VOCs from flowback pits in the U.S. Another contaminant of con or another pollutant of concern is particulate matter. Um, particulate matter is associated with silica-induced lung injury, respiratory um, illnesses including asthma and cardiovascular impacts, um, chronic neurological diseases in young children, and hospitalization rates of pneumonia. Also, um, exposure to silica sand from the very fine sand that's used as propens um, to open the fissures of, of the shale gas rock also has associated health impacts. Uh, retro retrospective health studies of workers who worked in industrial sand facilities show um, high rates of silicosis from, from, this, um, from this work. And while these are retrospective health studies from before the onset of unconventional oil and gas development, they do indicate that um, exposure to silica in the from fracking is likely to be a contributor to silicosis in the future. In order to frack a well, it takes hundreds of trucks to carry in water and sand and equipment needed. Um, unconventional development involves these very large multi-well pads and it takes millions of gallons of water and tons of sand and hundreds of different chemicals to hydraulically fracture a well and that all of that has to be brought in um, by truck and thus there is some 
you know, source of water on site. Um, so all of these trucks and idling of the trucks and just traffic of the trucks is, is, is a huge contributor to air pollution. Um, impacts on mental health and well-being, including self-reported stress and worry about health, mental illnesses, including depression, uh, fatigue and sleep disturbances from noise and light pollution, uh, general health symptoms, migraines and headaches, um, nasal and sinus symptoms, hospitalization rates were shown to be increase uh, for pneumonia among elderly populations and also um, rates for hospitalizations regarding skin um, symptoms and diseases. Another source of health impacts is through groundwater contamination. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection officially acknowledges 335 cases of groundwater contamination associated with unconventional oil and gas development in the Marcellus Shale. Um, we did notice a lack of studies that are looking at groundwater in relation to health impacts, which is likely due to the difficulties of tracking contaminants um, through groundwater transport. In Pennsylvania, an estimated 446,891 people live within a mile of a well, and um, 89,000 of them are under the age of 18. Uh, this is within a distance where um, the literature shows that there are adverse health impacts. And another important thing to note is that um, the way wells are spread out through this state, it's not uniform. Unconventional oil and gas development has the greatest impact in the northeast and southwestern portions of the state with uh, Washington County, Greene County, Bradford County, and Susquehanna County having the greatest number of unconventional wells. All of those four counties have over 2,000. In these four counties, in addition to Butler and Armstrong counties, the majority of the population, over 60%, live within two miles of a well. The results of this study um, clearly indicate that uh, unconventional oil and gas development is impacting people's health. Furthermore, impacted communities clearly attribute declines in their health to unconventional oil and gas development. More high quality epidemiologic studies are required to understand the exact causes of these, um, of these health impacts, but that's not to suggest that that the impacts aren't happening. They clearly are, and we're seeing it in the literature. Um, so moving forward, um, we recommend that state agencies take a precautionary approach to unconventional oil and gas development and address these public health concerns before continuing to permit unconventional oil and gas wells. Um, our approach needs to acknowledge and accept as fact that residents' health is being impacted and the current regulations that we have in place and or the enforcement of these regulations isn't enough to protect our health. Um, permitting processes going forward need more public participation because the public obviously is being impacted and this public participation needs to be meaningful. It can't just be you know, a box that's checked and then moved on. Um, we need to listen to the concerns of residents because they are noting impacts in their, um, to, their, to their health. 